Isayamo goes to the villa, has the president taken inside, and are the unfolding events in a dope state house of assembly constitutional? This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladendi. Welcome to Plus Politics. President Muhammad Buhari has endorsed Pastor Osage Izeyamu as the candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, in the adult state governorship election. This is coming barely 24 hours after the Speaker and Deputy Speaker of the adult state House of Assembly were impeached. In response to this, Governor Yesam Wike of River State and also the chairman of the People's Democratic Party Campaign Council for the adult state governorship election has stated that it is wrong for President Buhari, whose main agenda is fighting corruption, to back Izeyamu, who, according to him, is being charged for graft. Joining us to discuss this is Mr. Greg Ogiogwa, who is a chieftain of the PDP and probably along the line will be joined by an APC representative who probably voted out. He said he has uh, something urgent to attend to, but hopefully we'll have a representative from the camp to join in this conversation. So let me get started with uh, Mr. Greg. Good evening. Hey, hello, my brother. How are you, sir? Good to have you again. Thank you for having me. I'm proud to be here and I'm glad to see the work that you guys are doing. Fantastic job. Thank you so much. Thank you for your kind words. Well, let's get the conversation started. Um, quite a lot of things are happening. The latest is the fact that uh, even the uh, uh, Attorney General of the Federation has asked that these people should be protected, the 17 lawmakers, and also looking at the fact that uh, these people have been denied, according to some quarters, they've been denied representation just because the governor has refused. I'm quoting them now, has refused to get them inaugurated. Is this fair to democracy, uh, democratic practice, so to say? Come on, come on. This is, this is, this is, this is trite, you know, because one thing is for certain, the governor has no powers whatsoever to prevent anybody from being inaugurated. The governor's only power he has over the House of Assembly is to issue a proclamation letter, which he did on July the 14th of 2019. When he issued the proclamation, it was the duty of the clerk, uh, the clerk of the House, to inform all members who had already satisfied the pre-existing qualification. Because even if you have won an election, before you are sworn in or you are inaugurated, you must have sent in your uh, asset declaration. You must have sent in your tax clearances and so on and so forth. So even if you have won the election, if you have not sent in your asset declaration, if you have not sworn and signed to it, and your tax clearances and so on and so forth, you will not be sworn in or inaugurated. The clerk issued a pro uh, 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 the notice of, of uh, proclamation and inauguration of the house. Some people, for some reason, chose to go instead to a hotel in Benin. That's what you call the 12 lawmakers who now have become 14 or whatever. Now, they chose instead to go to a hotel in Benin because they wanted to predetermine who would be Speaker of Edo State House of Assembly. You see? So they went to a hotel. Instead of going to uh, 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 the, House of Assembly, the House of Assembly where the, proclamation, the inauguration was to take place, those who got inaugurated got inaugurated. They formed the quorum and they chose a speaker. Now, the other 14, or the 12 at that time, went to court to say that the proclamation made by the governor was illegal. And they wanted the governor to reproclaim the inauguration of the house so that they could now come back in and then choose a new speaker. But the courts at that time chose, and that was the federal high court in Port Harcourt, chose that, I mean, and, and, and then they averred that the governor was in, uh, in the right, that there could only be one proclamation. You cannot uh, inaugurate, the, you cannot proclaim the, uh, the uh, opening, the inauguration of the house more than once. So the governor was right. And if the proclamation was right, the inauguration was legal. And if the inauguration was legal, the emergence of uh, Okie as the, the Frank Okie as the speaker was legal. That is a, it's a standing judgment as we speak right now. 
Then uh, we went into a situation where the, these members, or not members, because they are not members, they were never sworn in. They stayed away, they stayed in Abuja, and then launched a war of attrition on Edo State. They initially tried to get the National Assembly, the House of Rep came over with a, with, with a body of uh, investigators to come and check what was happening. The Senate came after them, and they wanted the National Assembly to take over the legal functions of the Edo State House, House of Assembly. But the Nigerian Constitution of 1999, as amended, also states the qualification, the, the, the requirement for the uh, National Assembly to take over the functions of the State House of Assembly. None of those requirements were met. Edo State was never in a state of emergency. A state of, you know, uh, the House of Assembly with 10 members at that time okay. were operating with a court legally recognized. Okay. So there was no need whatsoever for the National And the courts saw that way and restrained the National Assembly from taking any part in this. So the, 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 the thing about it is, these cases, and they, they then went back to court to ask the court to declare, because after 180 days of them not being part of, uh, of, of uh, uh, the assembly sitting, after they had been uh, elected and the house had been inaugurated, according to the Nigerian constitution, 180 days of them not sitting is abdication of responsibility and duty. Okay. And the constitution then says, it must be declared vacant. Okay. And the speaker. Yes, sir. Greg, I, I, we'll come back to that. I don't want you to exhaust all your thoughts on this, uh, but uh, I must appreciate your opening remark on that. Yes, we have joining us uh, Ariata Odiana, who is an APC member and also a lawyer, and you can even see him in his regalia. Probably we will see what he has to say. Now, Greg has just explained let me call it his own side of what transpired, why these lawmakers were not uh, 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 inaugurated or sworn in as lawmakers. So, and listening to him this morning, I recall one of the things he said is that whatever they've done is a nullity because they are not lawmakers, they are just members elect. What do you have to say to that? Well, um, I think the, my, the colleague on the other side, whom I just heard his voice, um, so many of the commentators are not very sincere with uh, the political dynamics in Edo State. The narration in line with the law, which is the ground of the Constitution, has not been properly situated. One, was it right for His Excellency? Governor Obaseki to proclaim the House with only nine elected members of the House out of 24? The answer is no. It's wrong in law. Because by virtue of Section 91 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the minimum you have for a validly constituted House is 24. And the maximum you have is 40. So anything short of 24 and anything more than 40 is not in line with the provisions of the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria. I am surprised that some of the commentators are not talking about illegality, legality, and all that. In the first place, what informs the issuance of proclamation for only nine members out of 24. They have not explained that to Nigeria. So why was the attempt made by the National Assembly to take over the legislative operation or activity of the legislators in the Dose? Because to their understanding, there's no legislative house in the uh, House of Assembly because it was shot of the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I think that should be the basis of our analysis. Okay. Going from there, there were self-taking on both sides, mostly for those who have constituted illegality. They rushed to court at the, the, the high court uh, in the river state. Odiana, so yes. Odiana sorry for uh, quoting in. I, 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 I suspect that you're close to your TV. If you can uh, mute your TV set, now give us a better feedback. 
Thank you. I, I, is it better now? Okay, I think it's better now. If you can mute it's it completely. Now. Okay. It's, okay. It's better now. Okay, you can land your thoughts. So, uh, essentially, what is happening in Edo State right now, where the governor of the state did not only start well with the legislative arm of government, that has cost us what we are experiencing today. You can also see the governor of Edo State and the deputy governor supervising supervising the demolition of the parliament at the center of the city of Edo State. You see them standing and they are talks removing the roof in the name of renovation. I don't know what people call that. Is it proper for the governor of a state to have inaugurated the House of Assembly at an unholy and a parliamentary time? We are talking about 9.30, p.m. in the evening, and I hear commentators saying what they did was right in law. I don't think they are interpreting the law the way it ought to be. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, Why you try to fix every necessary uh, gadget so that we can have a better conversation, but I think your opening statement was clear enough. Back to you, Greg. I know you are itching to respond to some of these things, but let's quickly fast forward to what happened yesterday. Having given us your own version of what transpired at the beginning, what truly happen why should we have the governor and the deputy i'm seeking answers please don't quote me why should we have them rush to the venue of the state house of assembly when the police say they are only for stalling possible violence greg over to you can you hear me i can hear you now can you hear me very well Security officer of Edo State, is he not the governor? Who is the deputy chief security officer? Is he not the deputy governor? If the security of Edo State is threatened, if democracy is threatened, and the people who are sworn in, you know, sworn by the constitution to maintain the, the, the sanctity and the safety of lives and property, and they see that that is under threat, is it not their constitutionally mandated duties to immediately rush to the seat? It was not only the governor and the deputy governor, it was all the Edo people. I was there. A lot of people were there. Everybody was there. We wanted to see how they were going to use federal, what they so, the so-called illegal federal might to take over our, our, our House of Assembly. You see, I had my friend talking just now and going on about how uh, they were, you know, 9.30 at night. Is there a law that says that, um, that, that, that uh, inauguration of the House cannot occur at any time? Do the houses and committees not sit 24 hours if they have to, have to Saturdays and Sundays? Bauchi State, State was in exactly the same situation that we were in in 2019, when several members of their house refused to go for inauguration under the same circumstances. And they said... Wow, the network is... Uh, I, I wish we could quickly reconnect with him so that he can actually come back to finish his thought. Oretta, he has just raised something critical, that in terms of forming a quorum, this was their decision not to appear. So why do we blame the governor? You see, at the time where the house is being proclaimed, the issue of forming a quorum or not has not come to play. What the governor ought to have done if not for the blind dead policies they were playing, was to have issued a letter of proclamation and inviting all the House of Assembly left for that wonderful ceremony. But in an attempt to twist the entire narrative, they only invited nine out of 24. And of course, one of them was actually putting on a shirt maker for that inauguration. Okay, back to what happened in the House of Assembly yesterday. You would discover that... Are, we... Are you there, Ariata? Yeah, yeah, you're I'm back. There. I can hear you now. Okay. So what happened yesterday 
was when about 17 members of the House of Assembly now came together forming majority, like more than two thirds, to assert their powers as members of the legislative house. Between you and I, I would say that between the 17th day of June 2019, up to yesterday, there were no House of Assembly in the state. How what do you we mean? have now is the House of Assembly. And I can tell you, the Office of the Attorney General and all the relevant federal government agencies are going to uh, say there was work with what is the relevant parasitas of government in the state to ensure that the protection of lives and property and safety of the legislative members for the smooth running of the government. I, I think the governor should be able to appreciate what is happening now instead of escalating the security situation in the state. Okay. In the Thank name you of very much. I, I, I think we are going to, uh, I'm going to employ both of you to make some of your uh, uh, comments quite shorter. I, I, okay, we don't have uh, Greg yet because I, I heard his voice at the background. Okay, uh, we will. If it is possible, we might resort to a phone call so that we have him in this conversation. We got to hear both of them. So, still on you, Enrietta, uh, a bit of concern here is what is this explanation that members of the House of Assembly, since you said they just got inaugurated, who has the power to do that proclamation? The governor is still in power. And he hasn't done that. And this was also carried out outside the complex of the State House of Assembly. Well, I will start with the issue of the venue. You see, in the case of the Adelicate case, that is the Ladojas case in New York State, the Supreme Court has been able to establish what parliamentary sections are, on parliamentary venue, and on parliamentary time. There's no way we talk about venue as of today without not talking about the time, as at the time the first House of Assembly was inaugurated. In that case, there was a subsisting House of Assembly, which was not shut down by the governor, which roof was not being removed under the supervision of the governor and the deputy governor. Okay. And which member were not taken to one of the rooms in the governor's house? In the case of a dosage, the governor intentionally shut down the House of Assembly. Then the, problem, the question will not arise. No, what do you not expect? No, no, before you go to, you are rephrasing my question. I'm yes. saying that was that action constitutional. I'll come back to that because we're also going to have some legal minds like you after this yeah. session. But I think we have uh, Greg back. Like, Greg, I know, I don't want you to feel cheated. What, do you, what were you about to say? Because I heard your voice at the background. I was wondering where he was coming from. You were talking about 17 lawmakers. Who are the 17 lawmakers that have not been, they were not sworn in, they were not inaugurated? How, how are they, they, 180 days have passed since the governor's proclamation. The court, federal high court, he was saying now that the House, that the House of Assembly of Edo State did not exist. When the federal high court actually went and averted and, 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 and said that the governor's proclamation was right. And that the emergence of the, of the speaker under those conditions of the inauguration was right. How can you say that the House didn't uh, uh, exist? Who passed the 2017 budget? Who passed the 2018, 2019 budget and the 2020 budget? And you say the house didn't exist. I mean, that is absurd. This is what, what we're talking about. People just want to turn facts on their heads because they want to gain cheap political points. These people have not been sworn in by the law. They are in court and they have resorted to self-help. And the law does not recognize self-help. You are in court. Why don't you wait for the courts to come out and say, okay, okay you guys were... Uh, unlawfully or illegally, uh, 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 you know, denied uh, uh, inauguration. 
At the time when inauguration was happening, he said it happened at 9.30. At the time inauguration was happening, these guys were having a meeting in a hotel in Benin. They were having a meeting in a hotel in Benin, and they were determining at that time who was going to be speaker and who was going to be deputy speaker. Because it didn't work, Oshomole's brother was, presi was, was presiding over the event. Oshomole's brother, who is a member of House of Assembly, or the supposed member of House of Assembly, representing his own constituency, the building of a dynasty, or somebody who calls himself a comrade and a socialist, who calls okay. himself a people's, people, a people's person. He has a brother, he has a brother Greg, in the... I, the, I think I've referred to you to, uh, to uh, come in now. Commission on Oil and Gas. He has Greg. a brother who is a member of House of Assembly representing his constitution, okay, his Greg. constituency. And he says he's a, he's a comrade. And those guys are saying that they want to determine who is going to be speaker. Okay, Greg, Greg, I'm report. coming back to you. To come to the house. I'm yes, coming back to you. We have limited Sorry. time. Let me quickly rush back to uh, Ariata. I, I don't know what is really wrong where you are, but I will manage to listen to you. Can we make, can we clarify this? My question the other time is, the action carried out yesterday, was it constitutional as a lawyer? If you can help me with that um, direct answer. Well, I, 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 have, I have said this over and over again, that those who are justifying what has transpired in the House of Assembly before now are not honest enough to situate the law the way it is. One, they have said that while the proclamation was going on or the swearing in, the House of Assembly members were in a hotel trying to determine who becomes the speaker or who does not become the speaker. We would have asked them the question, who chooses the speaker? Is it the governor? Excuse me, sir. I'll come to your question. Is it the governor that chooses the speaker or members elect that chooses their speaker? What has placed us where we are experiencing today was the affront on the constitution by the governor to choose the speaker and impose them on the members of the uh, uh, House of Assembly elect. That they are not saying whether they were, were they invited for the proclamation. Hmm. Do you in, in proclaim the House at the hour of 9.30 p.m. in the evening or parliamentary hour? I think we need to answer those puzzles before we are not talking about whether what happened yesterday was legal or not. If we agree that what happened on the 17th of June 2019 is not properly situated in law, then we should agree that what happened yesterday also was a fallout of what the governor has done with the uh, State House of Assembly. Okay, now I get your response now. I, I think I, I understand your response. <laughs> and whether I agree or not <laughs> may not really count. So finally, because of time, let me get your final thought on this. Now, as we speak, the one with, uh, is this 17 or 20 lawmakers now, have ordered that the bank account for the State House of Assembly should be closed. How valid is that order? Greg, please, you have uh, 35 seconds. I just told you that those people are not lawmakers. They both do spawn in. They, they, they didn't sit for 180 days. But have you, have you considered the, the people they represent? Have you considered the people they, they represent that they've been denied representation? I'm talking about 17 the, the, the court, the court, federal high court, said that the proclamation was legal, <laughs> that the governor could not reproclaim the house. Said the inauguration was legal. The court said so. So for anybody to say that that was illegal means that they're, they're casting in, uh, uh, aspersion you, on the integrity of the right. judiciary. The judiciary has said it was legal. And that the who was sworn in. Odiana, Odiana, you, you have the, the right of response. You have to procure another. If what you, do, what you did was valid in law, why did you go to have for that? It 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 the court said it was valid. It is not for you to say it is valid or not. It is the court that says it is valid, not for any politician or any lawyer on any particular device to say it is legal but or not. The court said pro proclamation was legal, that, that, that the inauguration was that. legal. That's what okay. they said. And, and what you guys did was the talking of the law. Those guys were not inaugurated as members of the House of Assembly. They were trespassers. What they did was akin to a civil felony. 
Today, on the okay. 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 You went to go to your private premises and use. You will first want to go the way of the National Assembly by saying of the mic. And you use a clerk, a deputy clerk. Greg, the Constitution does not recognize. Greg, Odiana, sit up in the clerk's chair, and then you want to come and tell us. Please, we are national TV. Can we listen to each other? It's agbero politics in Nigeria State, and we will never accept it. Never. Agbero politics in Nigeria State is dead and gone. Godfatherism is dead and gone. It will never happen again. Thank you so much. Greg Ogiogwa is the uh, chief king of the PDP. And Odiana Eriata, I wanted to give you 35 seconds, but you spent almost 20 seconds out of it arguing with him. So in 15 seconds, do you think that order issued by, he said they are not lawmakers, they say they are lawmakers, by these 17 members of the House of Assembly, is it legal? Does it carry weight? Odiana, from, from, from next week, you are going to see the various agencies of government dealing with the 17 members of the House of Assembly. They are not 17 members. They are not 20. 20. They were not 17 members. They are illegal. They are, they are not the they are the the general of the federation or the bank. They are not, they are not okay. the Okay, I'm with I will have to be forced to off the mic now. So I, I think uh, it is fair for us to listen to one another and let the people decide who is right and who is wrong. But I think uh, if I heard you clearly for the purpose of our viewers, you said from next week we will see the parastators relating with this 17. And according to Greg, he believes that they are not lawmakers. And I think that's a safe way to say thank you to both of you for your time. We quite appreciate. We will continue to monitor the events and we will expect that the right things will be done and to our viewers thank you for staying with us thank you we will take a short break now and when we return the place of the law in the happenings of a dual state house of assembly is up next but not after this report the adult state governor Gordon Obaseki has described the takeover of the state house of assembly complex as an attempted coup d'etat that is tantamount to treason and contrary to the provisions of the Nigerian constitution. The crisis in the Edo state legislature dates back to June 17, 2019, when upon my proclamation of the 7th Edo state house of assembly, some members elect refused to present themselves for inauguration. The Federal High Court, sitting in Port Harcourt River State, in a judgment delivered on 12th of September 2019, decided that my proclamation of the House of Assembly was lawful and that the National Assembly could not take over the functions of the Edo State House of Assembly as the conditions for doing so did not exist. Following this action by the leadership of the House, the 14 members elect approached the Federal High Court Abuja to challenge the constitutionality or otherwise of the declaration of their seats vacant. This suit is still pending in the court. This unfortunate situation has festered because a former governor of the state is bent on throwing Edo State into crisis ahead of the forthcoming governorship elections. I want to salute the resolve of all well-meaning Edo people in standing up to thwart the evil plans of these undemocratic elements who are bent on perpetrating an assault on our democracy by the purported inauguration in a private residence. These events portend great danger to the safety and security of our polity. It had all the hallmarks of an attempted coup d'etat the people of Edo State rose as one to prevent the desecration of our democracy. It is, however, worrisome that certain persons are willing to plunge the society into avoidable anarchy and conflict just to satisfy their illegitimate objectives. These acts are tantamount to treason 
contrary to the provisions of the Nigerian constitution. Be rest assured, dear people of Edo State, that our government will take necessary steps to defend the rule of law and democratic ideals.